because we need your word. And I ask you, Lord, to bless each one that's here today, the yeah. ones that couldn't come, especially our friends from Florida. <laughs> Yes. And watch over them, take right. care of them, bless them, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to put your hands upon them, Lord Jesus. Watch over the people that couldn't come this morning. Put your hands upon them, Lord Jesus. And let them know that they've missed something beautiful. And I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, for everything that you do for us, even though we're not worthy of it. But I'm asking you, Lord, to be with us, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask it all. Amen. 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 This morning, we don't have a specific place that we're going to be reading from because we're going to focus on the entire Word of God. You know, the Lord laid this on my heart yesterday. and My question is, behind me on the wall from Luke 137, it says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Amen. And I think sometimes as Christians, we view God's word as a resume. Mm. What is a resume? A resume is something that you do. If I go to give someone a resume of mine, on that resume says all the things that I've done, all the things I can do, and all of the ways that I can benefit the company in which I'm attempting to apply with. Oh, yeah. It gives all of my work experience. It gives every place I've been. It also says where I'd like to go in my future. Mm -hmm. But that resume means absolutely nothing if the people reading it choose to go a different route. Christians hear me this morning. We can carry around God's word everywhere we go. And we can open it up and read it every single day. But it will do absolutely nothing for you unless you believe what is written in it. See, the company that reads my resume, I can benefit their company, but if they choose not to, to hire me and they go a different route than all of the experience and all of the things that I've done and all the things that I claim that I can do will be of no benefit to them. In God's word, page after page is written what God has done and what God can do. But we have to accept it and say, God, I believe that. Amen. Yes. Guys, I could praise God more. Yes. <clears throat> we all could. And I'm not just talking about within the four walls of the church. Right, right. See, our praise and worship to God should not just be a Sunday thing. It should be seven days a week. Yeah, come on now. And I know that you all know that. God, we don't come to church to see what somebody else is wearing. We don't come to church to talk about other people. We don't come to church to just lift up a prayer request and then forget about it when we leave. We come to church because we're thankful for what God has already done in our lives. <clears throat> we praise God for what he's going to do. And here's the best part about it, guys. Not just in our own life, but praising God for what he's going to do in somebody else's. Right. Amen. See, being a Christian isn't just all about what my life is happening in my life or what's going on in my life. Because guess what? If we're truly in love with Jesus Christ and truly serving God, then we're not going to have to worry about praying for our own needs. Because there's going to be another Christian that's doing that for us. Yep. We need to pray for someone else's need. Yes. 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 This morning in all the prayer requests, and as every Sunday, I hear a mixture of those who are thankful and excited for what God's done for them. Oh, yeah. And those who are hurting and crying out that God will answer their need. Amen. I said all of that. 
to get back to the resume. If we believe what God's word says, I mean, we truly believe it. I want you to think about something. All of the stories in God's word, and I'm only going to name you a few. But when the sun stood still in the heat of the battle, you believe that? Yep. When the walls of Jericho came tumbling down, do you believe that? Yes. Daniel and the lion's den. David and Goliath. Jesus calming the storm, walking on the water. Yes. The cross of Calvary. Do we believe all those things? Yes. <coughs> and if you didn't hear anything else I've said today, hear this. Stop carrying around the resume. Accepting yes. for what it is. We look around and we see God blessing all of these other people. And we think, how come my life and <clears throat> our church and all of our lives aren't like those people? It's because those people didn't just carry around the resume anymore. They put it to work in their own life. Mm. Yes. I want to reap the benefits that God has promised. Those who love and serve me. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my what? Amen. Commandments. Yeah. Oh, I keep them all. Donnie, I, I, I ain't stole nothing. I ain't slept with somebody else's husband or wife. I ain't killed nobody. I haven't coveted a thing. That's great. But it doesn't stop there. Do you dislike the one you sit in church with? Do you sit in the back or in the front or anywhere in the church and talk about somebody in your heart and tell them you love them to their face? Did you do as Brother Mike has said before? On Sunday, I turned over and played Holy Roller. Yes. Went back to sleep. Come on. Did you tell somebody what they called what a white lie because you didn't want to hurt their feelings? Mm. Did you promise God something you didn't follow through on? Did somebody tell you they needed prayer and you said, I'll pray for you, and you didn't? Mm. Mm. Did you see somebody that needed just a word from you that could have changed their life? And you walked on by. Yeah. Remember the story. Peter and John. They've been at the gate. The Bible said called beautiful. And they came through that gate. You know they did every day. On the way to the temple. That was their usual route. And for years. A crippled man laid at that gate. I'm sure they seen him day after day. But that day was different. Because that day God had led them to speak to this man. And guess what they did? Exactly what God told them to. Silver and gold, as we know. But what we give, we give in the name of the Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. Stand up and walk. Amen. <laughs> you think they doubted that? Well, you know, if I tell him to stand up and walk, do you really think he's going to stand up and walk? Well, I don't know, John. We probably shouldn't go over there because, you know, that guy's been there for years. We've seen him every day. And you're right, we don't have anything to give him. Quit 
let's take the long way around and maybe he won't see us. Christian, you want something to change in your life? Don't doubt what God can do. <clears throat> Don't doubt what God has already done. When Peter and John said, stand up and walk, they didn't doubt that God was going to change the life of this man. You know why? Because they weren't carrying around a resume. Mm. If I was to ask everyone in here, do you believe God can change your life and the lives of those around you, all of us would raise our hand. Amen. My next question is, then why has he? People are being healed of cancer. People are being delivered from alcohol and drugs. And whatever else may be afflicting them. Revival's breaking out. People are being saved. Why do we doubt? Yeah, but Donnie, you don't know my problem. It doesn't matter. I know Jesus. Yes. I don't have to know your problem. I know the one who can fix it. <clears throat> we deal with over almost two years now. We've been dealing with a virus. It's covered the entire planet. And somehow people think that, well, it just happened. I think it's God trying to get the attention of the world. And I think it's God trying to get the attention of Christians to make them wake up and realize who they're serving and whether they trust him or not. It's not about a mask on your face. I've heard Christians say, well, you know, people wear a mask. They don't need to come to church because we're a maskless church. No, you're a godless church when you start telling people when and where they can come inside the house of God. I read that online, a sign that said, we are a maskless church. If you choose to wear a mask, you can go somewhere else or you can sit in your car. Mm -hmm. Well, you're better off going somewhere else because God's not there. And this so-called preacher that had that sign posted is a joke. He's not a preacher and we need to pray for him. Yeah. Because there's a whole lot of them running around out there pretending to be something they're not. Right. When you start telling people they can't come to the house of the Lord like you had something to do with it, <coughs> you miss the mark. Because yeah. Jesus Christ said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. That means whether you've got a mask on, whether you don't, whether you're vaccinated or whether you're not, whether you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, Liberal, whatever it may be, doesn't matter. You call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. God doesn't pick and choose. I'm glad God doesn't pick and choose because he wouldn't have picked me if it was based on merit. Yeah. I didn't have anything to offer. <clears throat> I caused the Lord so many issues. Even as a Christian. I don't always do what I'm supposed to do. <clears throat> Paul said the things that I should do. Are the things that I don't do. The things that I shouldn't do. Those are the things that I do. Oh but you. Donnie you don't realize I'm a perfect Christian. You ever met one of those? They didn't do a thing wrong. When they were born, flowers fell from heaven. <laughs> Everything they touch is like the mightiest man turns to gold. Nobody praises God like they do. Nobody worships God like they do. Why? Preacher, I'm so righteous, I don't even have to pray the prayer and God answers it. We think, man, that's funny. Yeah, it would be if it wasn't true with yeah. certain people. They're quick to call out your problems and cover up their own. Mm. 
The moment you try to praise God in church, they talk about you. But who do they think they are? You know how many times they've done this? You know how many times they've done that? The perfect Christian. There's none like that. <clears throat> I'm far from perfect. When God called me to preach, it's hard to believe it's been seven years. When God called me to preach, I thought, Lord, what are you doing? You remember who I was? But I'll tell you right now, it's been the greatest thing in my life. Amen. Yeah, when God first called me to preach, I was nervous. The first message I gave was in December of 2014. And I've said it many times, I was glad that this podium was here. I didn't move from it because I was nervous. My knees were shaking. You couldn't see that because of this. Thank God. But I was nervous. And there's not a Sunday that goes by. And I know my dad will say the same thing. There's not a Sunday that goes by when I give a message. When I leave this pulpit, the devil doesn't say, do you really think you made a difference? Nobody listens. Nobody cares. <laughs> or the one that's theirs who do you think you are I know who I am nobody without Jesus and I'm so thankful to be able to share the word of God Yes. not only within the four walls of the church but Outside the walls of the church. With those who are hurting. Those who are, are, are addicted. Those who are lost. And those who the world has overlooked. I'm thankful every Sunday to be able to share God's word online. Whether it be Facebook or YouTube. <coughs> and the opportunities that God has provided. I don't ever want to take the word of God in vain. I don't ever want to take the word of God lightly. I don't ever want to forget what God has done for me. I don't ever want to forget where God has brought me from and where God is taking me to. It's a battle every single day of my life. And I know that if we are truly following Jesus Christ, it's a battle every single day in your life. But praise God, he promised me that no matter what, he'd never leave me. Yeah. He'd never forsake me. <clears throat> he'd go with me even unto the ends of the earth. Yeah. I heard a preacher say one time, he goes, I'm not a betting man, but I'm betting everything I got that Jesus Christ told me the truth. Yeah. Why? <laughs> because I choose not to view God's word as a resume. I choose to view God's word as as the one and only thing that took me from a sinner on my way to a place called hell to one bought by the blood of the Lamb that's on his way to a place called heaven. God's word is the only thing, the only thing, church, hear me, the only thing that's going to take me from here to that place that I've waited my entire life for. God's word is the only thing that's going to allow me to hear, enter in, thou good and faithful servant, yes. into the joys of the Lord. Why? Because Jesus Christ promised me, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, uh, yeah. I will come again Amen. and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Yes. Yeah. I may be walking the, still walking the earth, brother, brother Mike, when the clouds of glory roll back and I see Jesus Christ. 
or I may be buried somewhere. Uh -huh. Long forgotten by this world. But I'm still going to see Jesus. Yeah, amen. I may have been forgotten here. But he'll never forget me. Brother Ralph, he'll never forget us. I'm looking forward to that day. That I can see Jesus Christ. Guys, it won't be just a song that we'll have to sing. We won't ever have to sing because he lives, because we'll already be with him. We won't have to sing, oh, what a day that will be. We won't have to sing amazing grace. We won't have to sing what a friend we have in Jesus. Power in the blood. Right. Precious memories. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have Jesus or I bow to my knees or any of those songs. Well, no longer at 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning have to cry out to Jesus in a room where it's just us. We won't have to get up in the morning and wonder what Problems that new day is going to bring. We won't have to wonder what if, or maybe, or could be, or might. Sister Tony, we won't wake up with back pain anymore. Right. We won't wake up to hear the news of the passing of someone we love. Mm -hmm. We won't have to go to the doctor and possibly hear the news that we've got cancer. And I can promise you where we're going, you won't ever hear the word COVID-19 anymore. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. There'll be no more variants. There'll be no more social distancing. No more masks we'll have to wear. No more fear of tomorrow. Right. <coughs> As Jesus said, former things have passed away. Behold, I make all things new. Yes, he is. You know, we were talking earlier in service about, we got with Brother Mike saying that he's heard his whole life that Jesus Christ is coming. I've heard for 42 years, brother, that Jesus Christ is coming back. Yes. If I don't make it to see the sunset this evening, Jesus Christ came for me. Guys, don't be, and I've said this before, but it was a couple of Sundays ago, don't be like I used to and said, oh, I've got all the time in the world to figure it out. I'm not promised the next five minutes. <laughs> I'm not promised to be able to grow old into an old man, although I sure hope I do. But I'm not promised that. What I am promised is that one day I'm going to stand before the Lord. Yes. And I'm going to give an account for the life that I've lived. I'll step into my lot. And I'll step into it alone. No matter how much my family loves me, no matter how much each and every one of you love me, you can't stand with me in my lot before God. I'll stand there alone. And I won't give an account for what you did, but I'll give an account for what I did. Uh -huh. For the things that I said, the things that I didn't say, the things that I did, and the things that I did not do. All of those individuals that I should have spoke to, that I should have shared God's word to, that I possibly walked right by, I'll give an account for those people. For my opinions, my own desires. When I listen to those instead of God, I'll give an account for that. When I promised you I'd pray for you and I didn't do it, I'll give an account for that. Amen. For the time that I may have hurt your feelings. And overlooked it. I'll give an account for that. 
for the times that I should have said, I love you, and I did. <laughs> I'll give an account for that. The day that I accepted the blood of Jesus Christ is the day that I accepted responsibility for what happened in a place called Calvary. Right. Right. Being a Christian, I've said this over and over again, is not a spectator sport. It's not something you take and hoard all to yourself and do nothing with it. God's word says thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. A lot of people say, oh, it's just talking about a swear word. No, it's not. It's talking about taking the word Christian through the blood of Jesus Christ and doing absolutely nothing with it. Oh, but I got my get out of hell free card. Are you sure? <coughs> Because if that's the only reason that you went to the cross was to get your get out of hell free card, you went for the wrong reason. My dad has said this over and over again, and I believe it with all my heart. You will not go to the cross at Calvary and ask anything of Jesus Christ unless you're convicted of where you currently are. I don't have a right to ask Jesus anything. Christian, hear me. We don't have a right to ask of God anything. But I'm so thankful that yes. He gave us the opportunities. Yes. Amen. God doesn't owe me nothing. I don't deserve the salvation that He has given through the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't deserve that. What I do deserve is a place called hell. But praise God, I'm not going there. Praise God, hallelujah. I'm high stepping, Brother Mike, yeah. down a whole different path. Come on now. <clears throat> Christian, we want something to praise God about. Let's praise God that we're not on the old road we used to be on. That's it. Right. That we're on a new road. Walked and paid for by Jesus Christ. Doesn't ask us for a thing. I heard one time there's two things guaranteed in life, death and taxes. And they'll still tax you even when you're dead. Mm. Let that sink in for a minute. <clears throat> I remember when my grandpa passed away on my mom's, my mom's dad on her side. <laughs> and it had been a few months, I guess. And somebody had called my grandma asking to speak with him. It was somebody that was about a bill or something. She said, well, he's not here. And they said, well, you have a number in which I can reach him. <laughs> she said, sir, that's a long distance number that nobody's got. Mm. Well, what do you mean? She goes, he passed away. <laughs> Death in Texas. The only guarantees in life. Well, I've got one more. You're guaranteed to spend eternity in one of two places. Yep. Either a place called heaven or a place called hell. For those of you watching online, if anybody told you any different, they lied to you. I heard somebody say one time, oh, I can't wait to get to hell because I'm going to party with all of my friends. No, you are not. There was some kind of a, was it Ron Ray, something like that, said he was okay with going to hell. He didn't care. It didn't scare him. I don't plan on going to hell, but it scares me. You know why the world is the way they are? Is because we as Christians have it committed to God's word. We just carry it around. It becomes an accessory. Oh, gotta get my watch. You might see my wallet. <coughs> what about the car keys? Oh, and somebody gotta grab my Bible. Mm -hmm. Exactly. How many of us throughout the week? <laughs> if we
we forget to go to an event or forget to call somebody, we're like, oh man, I forgot to do that. How many of us get that worked up when we go, oh, I didn't read God's word today. Is this on? Yep. We don't, we don't look at God's word the same way we look at everything else. No. We don't value God's word the way we value other things. That's true. You know, I heard somebody on Facebook say that if we value God's word and we read God's word like we get on Facebook and spend all those hours on Facebook every day, we'd have had revival a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Amen. And that's true. I'm guilty of that. I mean, you get on Facebook, you know, and it's available 24-7. And, you know, mainly Facebook is to keep up with other people's business. You ever notice that? Oh, yeah. You don't do it to keep up your own business. You already know that. Oh, yeah. I don't get on Facebook and go, oh, man, I was supposed to do that today. I get on there to see what other people were doing. Uh, what they do? What they have to? Where are they at? It's sad, but it's a giant gossip platform. I remember when taking pictures of your food was popular. I think it's great you had chicken. I just don't want to look at it. Uh. <laughs> you know? But I remember that. People go out to eat, they sit down, they bring their food, they take a picture of it. I used to see it at the restaurant all the time. Uh. <laughs> I thought, wow, they're pretty proud of that pasta because they just took a picture of it. And then they share it. When's the last time we shared God's word? Guys, if you turn the news on for longer than five seconds, you're going to realize that the world is in a really bad place yes. right now. And yeah, we can easily, like so many, let's just blame the president. He's just one man. And I know I'm guilty of that sometimes. Pointing out, well, what do you do that for? I'm not president, okay? Nor do I want to be president. You couldn't run fast enough to offer me president of the United States. And even if they gave me all the money in the world to be the president, I'd say no. Uh, <clears throat> Here's a thought. Instead of talking about the man, why don't we pray for him? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's a Democrat. Doesn't matter, Christian. Amen. Pray for those who hate you, use you. Oh, you mean I got a light Democrat? You better if you ever plan on getting to a place called heaven. Uh, amen. You mean I've got a I got a grave for him? You know, the, the LGBTQ community, if you ever want to get to heaven. Yeah, but look, but nothing. Jesus Christ died on a cross in Calvary for everybody. Amen. Their sin is no different than the sin God saved me from. My dad said it many times, sin is sin. I don't care what side of the road you're on. But you know why we view things that way? Because we carry it around the resume instead of accepting it and living by it. Yeah. We carry it around. I got my Bible. Whistle in a tune on the church. The moment 1230 rolls around, you go home and eat your chicken, except for the rain. <laughs> or, or you go out to the restaurant. And you say, boy, that was a good message today. Boy, I tell you what, that really, that really spoke to my heart until Monday morning, and then you forgot all about it. Mm. Matter of fact, some people might get to their car and somebody go, well, hey, boy, that was a good message this morning, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. I think so. What are they preaching? I don't know. Guys, it's time to get serious with God. Let's not play around. I'm not playing around. We all could be better for God. 
all of us. Me included, man. I mean, I, I, I can only talk about my own life. I don't know your life. Only you and God do. But I can tell you what, there's a whole lot more I can be doing for the Lord. Let's get excited in Jesus. Let's pray one for another. Let's love one another. Let's get excited in the Lord. Let's come to church with purpose. And we'll see things start to happen. But until we do, until we put the resume to work, we're just going to continue to get by. That's it. That was another, another Sunday. It was good. <coughs> See him Mike up here when he's singing, getting excited. You know why? Because he's not just carrying around a resume. Right. Brother Ralph, getting excited. We ran into Brother Ralph at, at uh, Tractor Supply the other day. <clears throat> what you see on Sunday is the same Brother Ralph you're going to see throughout the week. It's not a front. It's not to get a pat on the back. You know why? Because he doesn't just carry around a resume. Come on. Brother Ralph, I've told my dad many a time. Mm -hmm. That you are the most humble individual I've ever met in my life. And there is no doubt for your love for Jesus Christ. Right. And that's what we need to be. Brother Mike, Sister Tony, same thing. So many others. Sister Lorraine. I mean, all of us in this church house, man, we've got a love for the Lord. Because, you know why I say that? Because people come into the church. We had a preacher one time come through the doors of the church. For an event, and his exact words were, "Wow, something's different here." Yes, yes, hallelujah. I'll tell you what it is: the Holy Spirit's here. Yes. But when a preacher from another church says, "Wow, something's different here," I feel like I'm at home. Well, that glory. You know, I'm biased. I think we've got the the greatest church people there are. Amen. I do. I believe that, that, I mean, I've, I've been part of this church my entire life. I've seen moments in this church house I'll never forget in the moving of the Lord. We've got something special here. I'll say this and I'll close. You all know the story of God's word. Where there was a leper and the shadow of Jesus crossed over and they were healed. Think about that for a minute. Jesus didn't touch him. Jesus didn't look at him. Jesus didn't speak to them. Just his shadow crossed over and they were healed. Church, we've got something special here. Jesus Christ is passing by. Amen. What are we going to do with it? Are we going to let him walk on by? No way. Continue carrying the resume and go, well, this is what I've always done. This is how I've always done it. Had somebody say that one time. Well, this is the way I've always served God. Was it working for you? Well, not really. Then here's the thought. Why don't we let God lead us in the way that we serve him? Yeah. I want to be a Christian that's on fire for God. Amen? Amen. I want to be a Christian that gets happy to come to church. Right. When, when, when uh, uh, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Yes. Anymore, Christians are... Not as happy about that. They're glad when everybody said to them, let's go to the family kitchen after church. <laughs> For those of you that know me, I like food. 
But it's a sad day when I get ex more excited over food than I do Jesus Christ. So I want to ask you something this morning. Jesus Christ is passing by. Yeah. Are you willing to say, you know what, Donnie? I want to draw closer to God. I want more of the Lord in my life. I've got family and friends that are lost. If Jesus Christ came back today, they wouldn't be ready to meet him. I've got health issues maybe in my own life or in the lives of someone else that I love and care about. There's somebody, Donnie, I know that I need to be praying for. I just want to come and tell the Lord how thankful I am for all that he's given me. Yeah, you can pray where you're at. But when you step out in faith and say, God, I'm coming to you. I'm going to be like the woman with the, 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 the blood disorder. She didn't wait in the crowd and holler out to Jesus for Jesus to come to her. She crawled through the crowd to get to Jesus. As my dad preached last Sunday about the crippled men they brought through the roof of the church or roof of the building, they could have easily waited for Jesus to come back out the door that he went into and waited for him. They didn't do that. They bypassed the crowd and went to Jesus. Yeah. Let me be very clear to all of us. Mm -hmm. sometimes calling out to Jesus to come to you isn't where your miracle lays. Waiting for Jesus to come out to you is not where your miracle lays. Doing all that it takes to get to Jesus just might be where your miracle lays. Yeah, yeah but somebody might think about it. That's all right. They probably think I'm the craziest person to walk in a pair of shoes with all the pew climbing, hooping and hollering for Jesus and walking around the church praising God. But you know what? I don't care. I don't serve them. I serve a risen yeah. Savior. Yeah. Yeah. I get excited in the Lord. There was people one time that quit going to church here because I preached from the pew and I walked about three back and they said, well, he's walking all over the pews. Well, guess what? When the spirit gets a hold of you, you'll do some things that maybe you didn't do before. And they went on down the road to another church. That's okay. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to get excited in Jesus. There's probably a ton of people online that think that's the craziest bald white boy I've ever seen in my life. But you know what? That's all right. Because one day I hope and pray to hear and enter in thy good and faithful servant to the joys of the Lord. I hope one day when I stand before God, I get to see all those that heard the gospel and come to know Jesus Christ because of the word that the Lord gave me to share with them. I'm hoping one day that when I reach that judgment seat of Christ and I stand before him, I hope and pray that I accepted the resume of God. This morning, if you're watching with us online, I want to ask you a question. The message you've heard today and maybe many messages you've heard over the last year, year and a half, <coughs> have told you what it takes to be a Christian. Have told you what it takes to get your needs met, your prayers answered, the lives of those around you changed. But maybe you're here this morning and you say, you know what, Donnie? I've heard all the messages about salvation. I've heard all the messages about the cross. I've heard all the messages of how much Jesus loves me and how much Jesus cares for me. But over the last while, I've seen a lot of Christians who profess to be something not be who they profess they are. I've had my feelings hurt by people who went to church and people who said they loved the Lord. I've been used, manipulated, overlooked, and deceived. And all I've had to show for it at the end of the day was less than I started with. So how in the world can the Jesus that you're sharing be any different? The answer to that is this. I'm going to be as clear as possible. I don't want your money. I don't want a thing from you. You don't owe me nothing. 
You don't owe this church nothing. You don't have to give away everything that makes you who you are in order to get somebody to help change your life. It doesn't work that way. All you have to do is know in your heart that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. And that if you call upon the name of the Lord, then he will not turn you away. It won't cost you $9.95. It won't cost you $19.95. It won't cost you anything. Because Jesus Christ already paid for it. Guys, I know where you're coming from. Yeah, I grew up in this church. My dad's been a preacher at it for 35 years. But I did not get saved based upon what my dad has done. I wasn't going to make it to a place called heaven just because he was saved. It didn't matter that I went to this church my whole life. It didn't matter that I sang every song in the hymnal. None of those things saved me. And through the drinking and the drugs and the messing around with the wrong crowds, had I stayed on that path just because I was a preacher's son wasn't going to give me a free pass. Had I died in that, in my life, I'd be in hell. Because salvation is personal. If I could make that choice for you, I would, but I can't do that. Just like you can't answer for my life. So don't you dare listen to somebody that says you've got to give away everything that you are just to receive something that doesn't exist. Because at the end of the day, when you chase after what somebody else said you need to have in your life, you're going to come up empty. Uh -huh. But if you pick up Jesus Christ and you chase after him your entire life, you'll gain the world. Yeah, you did. The devil makes it harder than what it is. Seemingly today, a lot of churches make it harder than what it is. But I don't want you to ask God to save you because that's what I told you to do. I don't want you to do it because you're looking for an easy way out of all your problems. I don't want you to do it because you are afraid of what the world and what's happening in the world and what tomorrow may bring. Because those aren't the right reasons. I want you to call out to Jesus because you feel in your heart that he's your only hope. Yeah. Amen. You'll never make it without him. <clears throat> Guys, know this. I may have never met you before in my life. You may, I know we've had people watch the videos from Pakistan. United Arab Emirates. We had a person one night at prayer service from, from Pakistan saying that if you profess the name of Jesus, they'll kill you. No. They said, I used to be a Muslim and now I follow Jesus Christ. They said, but pray for me. Because when you profess Jesus, they'll kill you. Guys, we have the freedom to profess Jesus Christ here today. Yeah. Without fear of being killed over it if somebody hurt us. But if you're watching this video, know that I love you. That I care about you. This entire church cares about you. Yeah, it's true. We may have never met you and we may never get to meet you. But know that you're not walking this life alone. That those of the Adrian First Free World Baptist Church are praying. They care about you. <laughs> and Jesus Christ cares about you. Oh, yeah. This morning, church, the altar is always open. I've said it before, it's like 7-Eleven, it doesn't close. Whatever your needs are, whatever you have on your heart, you don't have to share it with me. It's between you and God. If you want to share it with me, I'll pray with you. 
This altar is open. He says, come. Are we going to just continue to carry around the resume? Are we going to say, God, today is the day that I put your word to work in my life? Yes, Lord. To be a better Christian. To be a better witness. To have a better prayer life. To have a better worship. A closer walk with thee. Or to pray for those that need a touch. Let us stand.